And then the last thing I want to touch on was mentioned earlier, but I, I'd like to give it more due credit. The buzzword in, in, in the profession now is evidence-based, right? Evidence-based treatment, evidence-based treatment. Evidence-based practices requires evidence-based technology, right? This, this is great technology, right? The DRX 9000. Evidence-based technology is going to give us scientific information as to what are we doing when we treat some of these people for focal disc herniations. And the study that was done, the poster board which is here, I'd like to bring out a few points and drive them home for you. It was, public, it was presented at the American Society of Anesthesiology in Chicago and the title of its Motorized Spinal Decompression for Chronic Discogenic Back Pain, a chart review of 100 patients. And these are some people from the, from the advisory board uh, that, are, uh, that had done the study. And I hope you're as impressed as I am. These people are from Stanford, uh, from uh, this uh, NEMA Research Foundation, from John Hopkins. I'm advised that the, uh, the physicians on the advisory board here at Axiom have published scientific journals over 1,000 papers collectively. It's a very prestigious advisory board, and these are some select people from those advisory boards. These are medical physicians, MDs. They did this study. It was a chart review, and what they did was they conducted a retrospective review of 100 selected outpatients from four clinics. One was at a hospital, and three were freestanding. Patients were previously unresponsive to traditional conservative measures, which means they had to have their back pain for longer than 12 weeks, and they had been treated for chronic lower back pain uh, than with the motorized spinal decompression unit. So at random, they went into these clinics and just pulled out these studies, right? Not case selected, right? Just at random, right? It could have been you or I given an assignment to go in and do that. 74% of these patients were diagnosed by MRI to have herniated discs. The remainder had a combination of disc bulge, degenerative disc, or disc herniation. 75% of the disc abnormalities were identified at L4 or L5, okay? So we know that most of the lumbar disc herniations are going to be at 4, 5, 5, 1. Sure, they occur at L2 or at L3, but not as commonly. The patient files selected revealed an average of eight weeks of care on the DRX 9000, and these sessions were performed four to, times, four to five times for the first week tapering to one session per week. The average was 23 sessions for these patients. Each session was approximately 28 to 30 minutes for treatment. The review of the files revealed the following. Pre-treatment, the approximate average of pain, I averaged the numbers around six on the visual analog scale. The percentage of patients utilizing steroids for pain control, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, was about 43% of those patients, and if I recall, about 24% of them were using op opioids as well. And the approximate average oswestry, low, low back pain disability index score, was 22. So that's what their numbers were when they began their treatment. Review of the files following their treatment, okay, they went from six down to just below one. I averaged it off at one. Approximate average of the patient's pain score on a visual analog scale was one. The percentage of patients utilizing non anti-inflammatories for pain control and our opioids went down to zero, right? You know, you stay on non anti-inflammatories for a long time, you get ulcers. You blow the duodenum, right? You all kinds of GI tract disturbances, right? And not good. And their analog scale, uh, their low back pain disability index went down to 6.5. Pretty dramatic from a random pick from three different sources. Review of the post files post-treatment, 90% of these patients reported improvement, okay? And it was interesting I, I, to share as they did uh, phone calls out, those numbers were fairly consistent with what was presented here earlier today. You maybe get a 4% recurrence rate after six months, maybe 6% after a year. I'll tell you what, the recurrence rate on low back surgery is a heck of a lot higher than 4 to 6%, right? I'll take those numbers any day, right? Review of the files also post-treatment said 90% of the patients reported improvement, no lower back or leg symptoms. So what do you mean by improvement? They didn't get a recurrence, okay? 90% of these people didn't get a recurrence of their lower back or leg symptoms. Review also of the file showed that none of the patients went on to have any 
invasive therapies or surgery. Even if they weren't responsive, they were better, right? They were a lot better, and uh, they didn't require surgical decompression. Review of these files also noted, and I think that was interesting. I've talked to a lot of different patients. 100% of these people would refer these, uh, would recommend the DRX, DRX 9000 to someone else for a similar back complaint or back or leg complaint. So it was high patient uh, uh, agreeability or success where the patients were very happy with uh, the uh, treatment that they received. And of course, it's done here at Axiom Worldwide. There's the equipment that uh, these patients are being treated on. 